What you're looking at around me right now is what's known as a point cloud. Basically, I've created a 3D mesh of the room, converted the mesh to points, and have done a little bit of warp, a little bit of CGI magic to it, and created this, what I think is a very cool effect. And what's even cooler is that you can do it for free. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you some other cool things that I was experimenting with, and I'm going to yap because that's what I do in tutorial videos. So if you want to skip it around, you know where to find it. Um, one small caveat before we begin. When I say that this is a free process, that really means that the software is free. You still have to have a computer that can run Blender and you need a phone that has a LiDAR sensor. I have an iPhone 12, so not that new, but you need those things. I feel like it's insincere to not acknowledge that those things cost money and not everybody has access to those things. Secondly, this is an experimental sort of filmmaking form. So you can follow my tutorial exactly and you'll get exactly what I have created. But I think where the power really resides with this kind of workflow is experimenting, just like, you know, turning the knobs yourself and figuring out what happens when you combine weird things. So you can follow mine, you can get my exact result, but I think it's cool to get new results. Okay, caveats over, let's get to it. I was first introduced to point clouds when YouTube recommended me this tutorial, which I tried my hardest to follow, um, but I don't know touch designer very well and I found it to be very frustrating, but this is the result I got. I didn't know how to move the camera or change anything, so I moved on to using Blender, and that's the process that I'm going to show you here. Scanning and then using Blender. Now the app that I've chosen to use is called Scanniverse. It is free. There are a lot of paid apps. They're probably better than Scanniverse, but for what I'm using it for, it's perfect. So you go into the app, you hit mesh, you hit medium object, and then when you hit record, you just point it at the whole room. Everything that's covered in a red line means it hasn't been scanned yet. And for our purposes, the more detail you have scanned, the more backs of objects, the more crevices you have, the more interesting the point cloud will be. So go around scanning the room, being very thorough. When you're done scanning, hit the record button again, and then you're gonna to wanna to choose area. I feel like it has the perfect amount of detail to not being dumb and huge. And then you hit save, and then once you save it, you can see the 3D object, which is cool, but then you want to export it, and you want to export it as an FBX. One of the things I think is really cool about this effect is that it does a really good job of demonstrating what a memory would look like. You know, it is it is the place that you've scanned, it is the object that you've scanned or whatever, but it's abstracted to the point of almost not being recognizable, which I think artistically is very powerful. Like, I think when you remember a place, it is abstracted, it's got a little bit of movement, and I think this does a really good job of sort of representing that. I think that's really cool, I think that's why I'm really drawn to this effect. So with your scan, you want to go over to Blender, and basically everything that I learned I stole from this tutorial, and I bastardized it myself, but this tutorial is really great, I'll put a link to it in the description. Here we're gonna start a general project, and we're gonna delete all of this stuff. We don't want any of that. Then we're gonna go File, import FBX because that is what we exported the mesh as from the scanner and so that'll look like this you can leave all these things as the default I'm pretty sure Boop. and there it is there's our mesh that we scanned if we hit this button you can see it's got the color data Wow looks real good um, first thing I'm gonna do and you don't have to do this but I'm gonna do it I'm going to trim the TV part off so it's sort of like open because that makes the camera moves a little bit easier you don't have to do that you can put the camera on the inside but I don't want to do that so I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode and then I'm gonna go into x-ray mode and I'm just gonna bloop, delete all those vertices and so now you can see that it's kind of like a stage okay so now we need to convert this into nodes so what we want to do is open up the geometry node editor here and we're going to create a new geometry node da, da, da. so the first thing we need to do shift a to create a new thing we're going to do distribute points on faces and what that's going to do is that's going to put points on all of the faces obviously but I'll, we need way more than this so we're going to start with 50,000. okay so that's a lot it's very dense 
my computer doesn't like that. So and then the next thing, since these points are way too fat, way too chunky, we're gonna go point radius. So point radius. Bloop. Uh, and then we can make this small. Bloop, 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 bloop. And there you can see it's starting to look like a point cloud. Well, it is a, in fact a point cloud, but it doesn't have a texture. So shift A, set material. We're just gonna pop that here. We're gonna select this, but as you can see, it's still not working because there's one more step that we gotta do. We gotta switch over to the shader editor. Two things we're actually gonna do. We're gonna remove this principal BDS shader. We're just gonna take the color straight into the surface. Bloop. And that's just going to keep it exactly the way that it looked from the scan. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna do that. The thing that we really need to do is we need to add a UV map input. Drag that here. And you'll see there are no results found here. There should be a UV map. I don't know why it does this, but you have to go into edit mode of the object. So you tab into edit mode here. So now we're in edit mode of the mesh and there will be this. That's the UV map of this object. So you, then you tab back into object mode and boom, there you can see the texture, the material is correct. So we can go back into the geometry node editor. Okay, so a couple of things. These are all the same. All these points are all the same size. They're this. We want to give it a little bit of size variation. So to do that, we do a random value. And this is a trick I learned from that tutorial video, a multiply. Math, multiply. And the reason we want to do this is because we want this number to be small, but we don't want to have to deal with small numbers. Boop. Put that in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I normally do like 0.03 and 0.8. So now if you look, the there's variation in the size of the points. And that's all fine and dandy and great and cool, but there's no motion. This is just like, if you were to play this through, it would stay exactly like this the whole time, which if that's what you want, then boom, you can skip ahead. To add some variation, we're gonna add set position. And we wanna add some variability to this offset here. So in order to do that, we're gonna add a noise texture. Put that there. If you just connect the color into the offset, it'll move it. Um, well, obviously it's distorted it a lot, but it's also moved it a little bit to the right here. And I don't know, I've watched a lot of videos. A lot of people have different explanations and solutions, but the one that I found that works the best is you do an add and then you just do negative 0.5 and that brings it back into the center. I don't know why it does that. Changing the parameters on the noise texture is a really great way to get your own look, so I recommend you doing your own thing, but I'm going to try to replicate exactly what I've already done. <laughs> Took a picture of what I did last time, let's see. Roughness is 0.5. Oh God, I can't even read, fucking moron. Might be a seven. What does a seven look like? Okay, that kind of looks sick though. So, yeah, Um, but this is not animating still. This is just, a still image. So to make it animate, we're gonna turn this to 4D so that things move over time. Um, but still nothing is going to be animating. So in order to make it animate, we're gonna do scene time. And what this does is it basically every second will change on a variable. In this case, we're gonna be changing the W, but every second is too fast. So what we're gonna add is we're gonna add a divide and we're gonna divide it by, mm, 45 so that's gonna be very slow we'll put that in the w so just like that this animates over time but it's not done yet to really get the effect full go into render view and then what we want is we go into the world here and i normally change this to black and you'll see that we can still see oh, why can we see this <laughs> oh because we uh because we okay okay wait, hold on see we're always learning in this since we're not going to a shader this is unaffected by lighting so if if this is all you want, you don't want to play around the lights, then we can move, move on to the camera part. But if you want this to be affected by lights, you have to add a, the shader back in. So BDS, have principal shader, principal BDS, put it there. And now you can see, can't see it. So we're going to add in a light, shift A, of course, light. It's an area light, scale up. And we're going to go to the light settings here. And we're just going to bring this up. All right, that's pretty cool, but we could make it cooler. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna make a cube. We're gonna add some volumetrics. So we're gonna scale this cube up, S to scale. And we just wanna make sure everything is inside of this. Uh, and then you wanna go to object, apply, scale. Sweat, control A. Yeah, scale. We wanna apply the scale because we change the scale in object mode and not in edit mode. Next thing we wanna do, we wanna come over here to make sure you have the cube selected. Go to object mode, viewport display. Display as Y, uh, and that will let us see through it once we change this. So we need a new shader. So we come to the material properties, new, and we want to delete this. And we want to create a principled volume. 
and then this will be dragged into the volume. And there you go. Now we got some some fog, uh, but this is too much. So let's do 0.02. There we go. That's pretty good. Since these are points, you can really get fancy with the lights. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And the last thing we need to do is we need to add a camera. So shift A again, camera. And then what I normally do is I come over to this thing and you hit view, lock camera to view. And then if you hit zero on the number pad, now we're in the camera view. Oh no, we're in here, there. We just want to line up the shot. And then we're going to go to the timeline down here. And this is where we're actually going to have the animation. My computer is going to suck. Okay, one thing you can do if you're setting up the camera that is very helpful is if you go to the mesh that has all this stuff and you hit this here, the modifiers, and you just hide the real-time display of the geometry nodes, it'll play a lot better because now it's just the mesh. And so to do camera moves and stuff, I find this is the best. So what you want to do is you want to be in the camera. You want to go to a new keyframe. I have that set to I. Move to the end. I think just a little bit of motion looks better. Like slower motion makes it the whole thing look cool. Okay, and then hit I again to set the keyframe. So now... This is what the camera move looks like. And again, you can play around with that. I'm not going to dive too deep into like keyframing in Blender. There's plenty of good resources for you to figure that sort of stuff out, but for our purposes, and then we can come back to this, turn this back on. So now we've got, we've got some animation. Oh, real quick, I'll show you my render settings. I just do EV. I set this to like 24 samples. Um, I turn on rate tracing. And I set this to GPU. And that's it. That's all I do. Tell it where to go. I export it as a PNG. And then you come up here and you hit render animation and it'll go through. And it's pretty quick. At least on my computer, it's pretty quick. And my computer's nothing crazy. I've been thinking about how kind of sad it is to reconnect with somebody and find out that their life has sort of moved on without you lately. <laughs> I've been reconnecting with people and I think, you know, that's sort of a a fresh thing. But it is really interesting. It's kind of egotistical to be like you should be exactly the same as when I saw you last. But then I think that's just like human nature to want people to be the same as when you saw them last, especially when you like really cared about them and you know, just like life or circumstances or whatever, just like naturally drew you apart from one another to like reconnect and be like, oh, you are not the same person that I, like since I loved you last, you are someone else or whatever. I think that's very sad and like, uh, Kind of grandiose sort of way but i think you know it's just fascinating to just sit back and think like oh yeah time goes on <laughs> in your absence things are not just frozen they continue to change and evolve and i think that's good obviously you want people that you care about and people that you love to like continue to grow and like find themselves and stuff like that but it is kind of a sad thing to be like oh you've changed in a way that has like removed me from the equation but you know, that's just me being like, how dare you forget me? <laughs> how dare you forget me? No, not forget, but you know what I'm saying. Like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you is just such a crazy thing to say to somebody. It's just sad. It does, you know, it's not like a, how dare you feels angry. It's you're just kind of like, yeah, that's life. And it, sometimes life is sad. Okay, so this next one isn't free. It costs $15 to add on, and it might use AI, which is bad, but it's called True Depth. And this tutorial was really great in teaching how to install it and the basics of what all the tools do, and you can definitely use this for evil. But we're gonna use it for good. We're gonna use it to create point clouds. So once you've installed True Depth, and I recommend that you watch the video that I'll link in the description to see how to install it, because it's kind of in-depth. It requires a couple of steps, and it's sort of outside of the purview of what I'm teaching today. So let's imagine you've done that already, you've installed it, you're coming back to learn how to make it into a point cloud abstract experimental animation. You come over here to True Depth. You hit open, you're gonna select the image that you want to turn into the point cloud. So hit open. This is the image. It's a bunch of my friends on our college porch. Generate depth map. And so what this is gonna do, it's gonna use the technology that it has at its disposal to create, to crash, to create a depth map here. And then you hit create mesh. And we're gonna go this, boom, there it is. So this is the picture and it's created a depth map and it's not perfect, um, but it's pretty good. There's me. For our purposes, this is gonna be perfect. One thing that makes a big difference is increasing the subdivisions. The more subdivisions, the more detailed the image will be. All of these settings control different 
things about the depth, but the only thing that I really touch besides the subdivisions is this base stuff. If you hit this, it gets rid of the base. So maybe you want this, maybe you don't. I find that it adds too many points, so I remove it so that it's just the image. But if you want to leave this, you can also create a material and make it like black or gray or something like that. You can make it whatever color you want, but I'm going to remove it. And then that's pretty much it for the true depth. It's done its job. I like the way that this looks. Um, if you wanted to fine tune it, if you wanted to finesse, you could definitely go into the sculpt mode and finesse. But since I'm happy with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply all of these so I can do the point cloud to this without any of the modifiers getting in the way. Okay, and so then basically what we're gonna do is exactly what we did in the previous tutorial earlier in the video, but with one small tweak. So we're gonna add modifier, geometry nodes. We're gonna create a new geometry node. And I'm just gonna blast through this really quickly. And I'll show you, just go, this is fast mode. Watch the earlier part of the video for regular mode. Okay. So far, everything is exactly the same, but I'm going to show you where there's a change in the workflow. And it's here in the set material. As you can see, there's still no material here. Uh, we want the true depth material 01. Um, this is just because I have two collections right now. You're gonna, if you just created a new project, it'll be this one. But since I have two going, it's this one. As you can see, it's broken. So we gotta go to the shader editor. And because of how true depth works, it's a very complicated, you know, mess of shaders and image textures and things like that. So what we need to do is we need to add that UV thing and where that's going to go, it's going to go between mapping and this vector input. And so what we need is we need to add that UV map and then we need to add a vector math. We'll put the vector math here. And so these two are getting combined into this. And again, we're going to have to do the exact same thing that we did earlier with this, where we go into edit mode, then click the UV map and then out of edit mode. And then just like that, boom. Now we have the correct shaders, the correct textures, the correct materials on the point cloud. And then you can play around with these again. You can play around with this. All of these things you can change. You can change the density, you can change the size. This is where you can really run wild, run free, and create really interesting things. And again, I recommend that you add volumetrics, that you add lights, that you add interesting camera moves. And I will show you, here's what I created. And so just like that, we've come to the end of the tutorial video. I hope you've learned something. I hope you can apply this in some meaningful way to the art projects that you are working on. I would love to see what you're working on. Be sure to tag me, put me in the description. I don't know, I'm not on social, so it's a pain in the ass for you to show me your work, but if you can find a way, hopefully the people you reach out to have changed for the better, but still have left space for you in their hearts. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.